Hello right bags, it's Jade. Welcome to my Tribes and Midgard review. I'm not a professional reviewer, I can only tell you what I enjoy from the games and I often talk about what they can maybe do in future. Obviously this is going to be a live service game. They've got regular updates incoming. Every two months they're going to be having a refresh and every four months it will be a brand new season with a new seasonal boss as well as obviously more items being added to the game. So let's talk about what Tribes of Midgard is, then I'll talk about what I like, what I think could be worked on, and what I think they need to add in the future. Agree, disagree, not a problem. Leave it in the comments section down below. Just keep it civil, yeah? Let's go. So Tribes of Midgard is a 10 player co-op game where you're meant to go out into the world, gather resources and defend your settlement against your Yotna as well as the hell things and a bunch of other mobs, creatures and enemies that you'll encounter in a procedurally generated world. During a lot of the preview time and over the last couple of years, it's been around that long in betas and closed betas, they have spoke a lot about the fact they wanted to do a survival lights game, not spending all day long doing nothing but chopping trees. Of course, you still will be doing that, but it's a one button touch affair. Everything you gather or craft, you pick up by pressing one button. Every night more or less in the two game modes, except a few exceptions where you get at least one day to have a little run around, you will be attacked by the hell things at your encampment. You've got NPCs to protect as well as the tree of life. You need to keep this tree of life running as when it falls, that is it. That's the session over. Tribes of Midgard is doing something very different. It's trying to mix a whole blend of genres going. You've got survival, you've got roguelike, you've got co-op and you've got tower defense. Along the way, while protecting your settlement, you need to gather the resources, special ones, to finally take on the lair boss in its saga mode. Saga modes are two and a half, two and three quarter hour sessions that are started by you and players can join if you want or you can do it solo and it's an opportunity to try and get to the point that you take on the final lair boss, which will change, as I said, with each new season. They do have a survival mode as well where it's endlessly going, the game just gets harder and harder with attacks on your settlement every day and it's just about surviving. Now the devs have coined this word surviving because they want to thrive and not just survive. And I think it absolutely matches what Tribes of Midgard is for sure. This isn't a cosy base building simulation game. It isn't a game like Valheim where you're just going to revel in the exploration. You are on a time constraint. You have to get the resources quick. You haven't got a moment to think. And it's definitely one of the things that I hope to see worked on in the future a little bit. I absolutely love the game. Obviously, I've been doing a lot of content on it since it came out. I've been hyped for it. I covered it way back when it had its open beta in 2019. Back then, I had imagined it being more of a traditional survival game, albeit on the over-the-top or top-down view. And it's got so many of them same components. Gathering the resources, being able to craft, making sure that you're surviving in the right temperatures. You won't need food or water in this environment, so it's lacking a few of the key survival aspects that a lot of fans might come to expect. But the temperature is a big factor. Going through certain biomes and making sure you're well-equipped, not just against the enemies, but the elements as well. But at its core, it really is a tower defense roguelike. Roguelikes are meant to give you progression after going through over and over again, maybe the same mechanics, exploring, taking a chance, trying out new ways to play the game. They've got specific loop beats that you have to kind of follow, and then you start to master stuff or you unlock new abilities that make the next run just a little bit easier. Of course, it has got them tower defense capabilities you need to put defensements on your settlement you need to fight off the enemies that will come and attack your base including the massive giants so if you're not a fan of roguelikes you're probably not going to enjoy tribes of midgard at all and if you're not a fan of tower defense nope if survival is your thing i think there is definitely some crossover here and i think a lot of my survival fans that have come to watch me for news gameplay and guides will definitely appreciate some aspects of it but it really is that roguelike tower defense gameplay and i kind of hope they do tweak it in the future to allow a little bit more of survival elements or just action rpg i like torchlight i like games like that as well and i thought this was a perfect mix or blend but it really isn't it don't have as much time to really flesh out your development you don't have enough time to prep each character for each run and i guess that's probably the one criticism i have of the actual gameplay you just don't have enough time to sink it all in take a look at the different armors the different weapons find out whether or not one's going to be suitable for you make a few mistakes even in that run i mean that's the nature of a roguelike you're meant to just restart a new session and learn from what you did the previous one but because the sessions are so long in this game where if you do complete a whole side run it will be two and a half three hours nearly then it does take away a little bit of that element of just being able to restart 
The saga mode also has a continuation. If you join with other players, if you decide to leave, even though you start this session, then the other players become the host and it will just carry on without you. So you can't just come back to your progress, even with your powers the next day, only in survival mode. I understand the merits of not allowing players to also maybe join after a certain point. After day three, the game won't allow any others to come and join you in a public match. You're locked in with them players. There'll be nothing worse than you maybe getting towards the end and then some dude just pops in for the last 10 minutes, takes on a lair boss with you and gets a bunch of achievements and rewards. But I still think they could maybe tinker it a little bit, opening it up so that players can still join up to maybe day four or day five or just have the ability to let you still be able to invite whoever you want after a certain day. Now they can get around this much more even easier if they add more options to survival mode. Now survival mode has got ways to make the game easier or harder and I hope they add the ability to make the days or nights a little bit longer. In fact make both of them longer. Make enemies attack more at night but give us a little bit more precious time during the day to get used to things. This game is always keeping you on your toes and it's interesting, it's addictive for the first sort of 15 hours that you'll play. But it starts to creep in after that, that I am kind of doing the same repetitive actions now. I'm gathering the same resources. And although the procedurally generated world helps a lot in stopping the repetitiveness coming a little bit sooner, it still just becomes a little bit of a chore at times, Not especially when you can't really adjust your play style. It's meant to have all these character classes that you pick and choose and you commit to for that whole session. And in doing so, you're going to have to learn which ones are more adapt, which ones will maybe give you the better weapon for a certain play style, some are better for solo, some are better for co-op play, but each progression that you have with these characters gets wiped. The next session you have to start again, you level up, you get your blessing points and you sink it in to build the character you want alongside crafting brand new weapons and armor. You don't take any stuff with you other than a currency that you can buy special perks with or rune stones that will give you some extra buffs when you're in the game and about to start. And that's one of the key problems I think the game has kind of got wrong. The best roguelites rely on being able to customise your experience, as I said, and give your character a new way of playing, freshen things up, mix things up a little bit more. Tribes Midgard doesn't have enough tools for that just yet because you don't take anything with you other than maybe some starter kits that will give you a tiny little percentage boost of something or they'll give you some tools that you'll be able to go and harvest resources straight away or get a armor set straight away. Now these sound great and they do definitely change and mix things up, but it's still not enough, especially in this game where there's so many different ways that things can change, where it's a procedure generated world, where you don't know which giant is gonna come and attack you first. It is entertaining for sure. And I think for pound for pound, the price they're charging is a great game that you should absolutely buy but it definitely does have some drawbacks with the elements that I can't just build something or I don't have enough to carry with me. It's not giving me enough reasons. There's a special unlock path all the way up to level 50 where your account goes and you can unlock brand new things like brand new runes that you'll be able to craft in the game or armor sets that you'll be able to craft in the game or you get the currencies that you'll be able to spend on more runes. And these are all great and these are all good, but a lot of the progression is really slow. Understandably, it is a live service game. They've said they're going to be updating it regularly, so they don't want people powering through for just two days. But the rewards that you get for each milestone are simply just not big enough or not varied enough. All the armor sets and most of the weapons are cosmetics. There are a few key pieces that you will be able to unlock while playing the game, but most of it is cosmetic. So you can certainly freshen up how you look, but I really do feel like they need to do more. You need to be able to customize my character before I go into a match, just a little bit more. Like, don't get me wrong, you can make your character look as bling and different as you want. There's lots of cosmetics to earn and stuff like that as you go through the seasons. Although each level is getting much bigger and bigger as it would, and it's obviously meant to last a couple of months at least. There's a bunch of different challenges that you can take on as well to unlock classes and a lot more in terms of like weapon recipes that you can then craft in the game. Allow me to choose two or three runes properly before I start the match and then evaluate where I want to spend my money or do certain things. I mean, it's not much of a difference. You start the match, you have to go to a chest, but you get a random selection of runes. You can spend your golden horns at this chest, but you can't be guaranteed of getting the rune that you want. Now we all know gamers have an uncanny ability to game stuff. So if we know that we can choose three runes that are always gonna be the most OP or the best, then players will gravitate towards them, even if there's 30 on show. 
And so maybe they're keeping it that way. They want that sense of, you know, it is that roguelike where you might have a really tough time one go and then the next time it might be a really good fun experience. But as I said, after the 15 hour mark, it becomes pretty much the same thing. You have to do the same approach or try the same things to even get anywhere close to finishing the saga mode. There's not really enough time to experiment or to try things out at the risk of losing a whole two hour session that you might have made progress in. It's definitely a fresh take on stuff, like mixing it up and adding a bit of urgency to survival could be a good thing. We've definitely seen too many boring survival games that have just nothing but coziness to them. You can build bases but you don't actually need to because there's no threat coming your way. Or they're huge massive empty worlds with not a lot going on, especially early access ones. The Giants are maybe suffering a little bit from this as well. There's not much difference or variety in their attacks. They've got their kind of main projectile attack, they've got their main close-up attack, and there may be one maybe variation between both of them. But undoubtedly, it's a huge hyper-ventilating thing. When these massive Giants appear on screen, you get fair warning for a good few days that they're going to approach, and you've got to take them out before they reach your tree of life. And it is great, it is that moment that you're on the edge of your seat, are you going to be able to defeat this guy before he makes it? At various times you're left with only a few souls, and the souls are the currency that you feed your tree, that you get from killing enemies and harvesting resources to hopefully replenish the tree, as well as unlock a variety of different fortifications and items. That system I really like. I like the idea that the souls are responsible for a lot of stuff and in combination with natural resources like getting stone, upgrading NPCs so they can refine resources and then building fortifications like gates and the archery towers. There's definitely a sense of accomplishment when you get a couple of gates running, you've got your archery towers going and you feel almost safe maybe just for one day. But that anxiety, that worry that it's not going to last, especially when you're playing solo. And I guess that's the other strength and maybe the weakness of the game. This game isn't particularly friendly for solo. Yes, you can play it solo and I'm sure I'm going to get some hardcore players say, yeah, I've done it, I docked to level 15 after half an hour. Some of you guys are just massively talented, what can you say? But it is really about co-op. This game is definitely best experience when you're playing it with others. And they do have a fairly decent matchmaking system. It isn't always online game and that's a little bit unfortunate as well. I do hope in the future they at least turn the survival mode offline so that players can experience it in case there is some sort of outage or the game does kind of cease to be running on their servers. But for sure, multiplayer is where it's at. Yes, the enemies get harder. They become huge, massive sponges that you have to just wade on for ages and ages. But it does mean that you get more opportunity to share resources, gather a lot more, explore the massive map, and find the right location to progress to the lair boss if you're playing in saga mode. There's definitely a lot of fun to be had in playing this mode with your friends. Crying and cheering if you just make it through one more day or you manage to unlock the final boss So definitely buy it if you've got a good group of friends You play regularly all together and you definitely can take a little bit of punishment in getting good Before you maybe start mastering the ways to finally get to the last boss But even in survival mode making the game easier It's still not enough I think to keep solo players maybe playing it enough the key aspect of survival is building, I said I don't necessarily want a big cosy game or building just for the sake of it, but this game has got the mechanics where the enemies do attack you. I would love to see more variation in what you can build, even if it's just more traps, and I'm sure a lot of that stuff will come in following seasons. I'm being a little bit critical, but it is a live service game, we know hopefully it will improve and add more stuff or change or mix stuff up in the coming updates. But the updates are spaced out fairly largely, it's a very tiny team that's made this this game. I'm not expecting Fortnite levels of content every week, but that's kind of the expectation when you call your game a live service. It's the sad reality that so many games nowadays will fail because they just can't keep up the content. And I do worry about that with this game. I have absolutely got addicted in the last couple days trying to get the classes all unlocked, doing the perfect run. Am I making sure I'm doing the right decisions? I'm thinking about the game before I load it up and they're all good qualities for sure. That's what you want as a game developer, players to be feeling that. But I'm also becoming increasingly irritated that I can't customise my character a little bit more before every match and that there's not enough ways to make my run a little bit more unique or different. 
Now there are plenty of characters, but they made the decision to lock off six of them behind challenges. So you have to exit a game 10 times with all your loot by the Bifrost to unlock the Seer class, or you need to take 25 hits of damage to unlock another class. And I understand why. Again, it's a season, it's an online service game where they're expecting it to go over time. And so they want more of a challenge. They want players to be able to go through and strive to unlock stuff. I've got no problem with that. That's a part big core of games like these and even games like Torchlight where you'd have to unlock certain abilities or side sort of characters by inputting your points into a certain tree. The classes themselves are a really good mix of what you would expect. Some are going to be a little bit of weak source like the Hunter in my opinion, others are massively OP in terms of what they can do for either solo or groups. You've got typical like warrior kind of melee focused berserker classes, then you've got tanky guardian and sentinel classes that help the team out a little bit more or a little bit more defense minded and then you've got things like seers as well that will do a little bit more support too. So I actually like the mix of classes, I don't think there's too much wrong with them, I like a lot of the attributes and skills there's a few that i feel like they're kind of copy and pasted just a few of the abilities some of them have just marginal increases in like shield durability and stuff like that and i think they could definitely tweak that and add a little bit more variety to each class so they're really more distinct um, but i guess it does build to that class and how it fits in especially in multiplayer but it does feel just a little bit arbitrary the way that you have to unlock some of these characters. And again, it goes against a little bit of what I'm talking about, having that customization, that freedom to build your character a little bit off the bat. Some players really won't like the game enough until they maybe find a couple of the characters that are a little bit better for solo players or they're a bit more better for someone who's a bit more of a support class. They may never get to that stage because they don't want to go through the process of unlocking them. There's a big choice in weapons and armors for the stuff that you need to craft and finding the right resources for them and hard to get stuff like drops from enemies and certain resources from certain biomes. That is definitely a challenge and I think a lot of players will really enjoy trying to get to that point where they're crafting this epic armor or this specific axe that they want to try out. A plethora of different resources as well, which again, it will appeal a lot to survival fans that are gathering so many different stuffs that you're going to need to focus in on. And it means that when you're playing co-op, you won't necessarily all be just taken from the same pot as it were. You can put all stuff in one community pot to help each other out, of course, but you do also have your own personal inventory. So watch out for sticky fingered Vikings. And when you start crafting a lot of these, you then start seeing, or especially the class unlocks, a lot more variety in the weapon animations. Like when you're doing damage, is it going to send a whirlwind? Is it going to send a lightning axe? Are you going to have shields that rotate around you? I hope they double down on this and really go to town on adding more unique animations or more unique abilities with some of these. I'd like to see a lot more area effect raining down with ice, wind, fire onto enemies rather than necessarily just being about being on you and circling around you. It has to be said, I've not unlocked the Seer class yet, so maybe that's going to do the job in terms of certain things like that. There's always a preferred method to do anything. If you've ever played Destiny and you're taking on the boss raids, we all know there's cheese methods and cheese videos and guides, tutorials will teach you how to do something the best way, even if it's not the way the game developers always intend. But right now it feels like I'm very much funneled through doing the exact same steps if I want to succeed. I have to get my farms up that will generate resources for me over time and I have to do that as soon as possible otherwise you'll never make it to the end game or have enough resources to craft stuff you need for the end game. You have to have a perfect run where you never lose any souls while defeating giants or enemies. That's the other clincher. You lose your souls if you're killed. You can change some of the aspects of the game that in survival you also lose your items or your equipment on death and you have to run back to your chest and grab it. And in saga mode you have to run back to your chest just to get your materials. And to roguelike fans, I'm sure a lot of you guys will be like, this sounds great. This is exactly what I love in roguelikes. But I just don't think it goes far enough in giving you a bit more creativity and a bit more freedom. And so if it's not catering fully to them types of fans that love that type of game, if it's not catering fully to the survival fans that are going to be maybe a bit let down in certain aspects or not being able to just take their time a bit more or just go ahead and build some bases or make more of the defences, then it kind of ends up being a game in the middle of nowhere. It's trying something different and it's on the cusp of actually a wave of games that are going to be like this. We've seen it with Deep Rock Galactic where you land on planets, gather resources, fight bugs and aliens and escape in your ship. And we've got Icarus coming soon where you'll be landing on a planet, gathering resources and escaping on your rocket before the weather gets you. So Tribes is kind of a forebearer for a genre that is going to be coming more and more 
co-op is huge amount of kind of prestige amongst a lot of gamers nowadays more and more of the big game companies want you to build this live service co-op game having fun with your friends logging in daily getting rewards and that sense of satisfaction from completing a hard challenge and in most of them aspects, they've got it right. The challenge is absolutely there. I don't necessarily need it to be easier in itself. I just want a little bit more time just to experiment a little bit more, take a little bit more time looking at stuff. You do have menus in the game that allow you to see all the resources so you can pinpoint exactly what biome they'll be in and read a little bit about them. You can see all the weapons. They come as the form of recipes that give you the lowdown and what you need to gather so you can make them. And you'll be able to really quickly maybe start building a character or class in your head but that's very different from actually playing it. Again, I kind of kind of wish they'd let you choose a lot of the stuff, armors and weapons before you start the match, at least a bit more in depth where you could maybe have a proper starter kit of a couple of rooms, the armor that you want that you've managed to unlock rather than necessarily unlocking the recipe and then still having to spend a long time going to unlock it. That would make the game a bit easier, but then I would expect the game to maybe scale and throw in different enemy types that would be the opposite of what elemental armor i had on or the weapon that i had would maybe mean there'd be more enemies generated with defenses against that element it's not a huge deal break up being able to craft some of this stuff but i also do think that you need to make it just a wee bit easier to get some of these items again just about experimentation by the time you get to day 14 15 in saga mode it's so cold that you have to have the most best armor on as well as elixirs that will keep the cold at bay as ever winter will roll in pretty much killing you reducing your life if you don't have the right things to combat the weather all that while defending every single night from the hell things i'll bet a couple and even harder blood moon nights where you'll get even more of the creatures and they do more damage and of course the yotna coming regularly and then trying to take on the raid boss there's a lot going on and there's definitely a lot to do and that's why in co-op this game is going to be fantastic for big groups or playing it as i said in match play just with randoms i think you'll have a lot of fun too so that's where i'm going to pretty much leave it i'm not going to harp on too much i think this is a great game i think it's trying something different it's mixing a fresh approach to a lot of the genres that i like like action rpg light survival like rogue lights but it's still just not there just yet hopefully over the coming months when they're thinking about the mid-season refresh they'll add some abilities for us to maybe customize and make each run our own a little bit more even if that means just doing it on survival mode only we're adding more abilities to make the night longer or day longer or to make some of the resources you need be a little bit cheaper to craft i think that would go a long way to kind of help a lot of players that maybe aren't as clued up about these types of games that don't necessarily like roguelikes but they like vikings or they do like survival or they do like action rpgs it's a solid, solid game. It's definitely worth its price. It's a cheap enough game. You can buy it and support the game with cosmetics if you really want, but there's no pay to win scenarios. Everything you can earn in game is done via just the nice horn system. And other than some cosmetics, that's the only thing you can actually buy to supplement. I, if I had to give it a score, even though I'm not IGN or anyone, I would probably give it a good solid 8 out of 10. It's trying something fresh, it's trying something different, and I think with the right feedback from the community, which I'm sure I'm not going to be the only one, I could see them definitely adding a bunch of the features that I'm talking about, or at least expanding and trying new game modes. The possibilities are endless in where they could take this, if they're getting enough success. And now, hopefully it's on PlayStation and PC, of course, but hopefully it does come to other platforms like the Xbox in future. In fact, I could see this being a great game to play on the Switch also. Don't buy this game if you're expecting an open world survival experience where you'll be building bases and maybe just enjoying the scenery while fighting enemies. Buy this game if you like a challenge, you like playing with others and you like the thrill of always being on that one cusp of either success or failure. It's going to make some interesting moments for streams, definitely it's going to be good watching groups play this and nearly winning or losing and I can't wait to carry on covering it a little bit more over the coming weeks. I don't know if it's got enough to sustain my channel for months and months. So maybe unless there's lots of updates that change and add stuff and particularly the mid season update, which I will hopefully be looking forward to when they add a bunch of new stuff too. But there you go. Tribes of Midgard, a solid, good outing, just a few little tweaks, a few little additions to game modes or uh, multipliers. And I think this game could potentially draw in even more fans. And that's what I'm really thinking about when I'm talking about reviews. I'm not necessarily just saying it's a good game or bad game, but what it can do in the future to pull in other players or what it's doing really well and to focus in on that 
I think challenge modes would be great on this as well, where maybe one session is all just about killing 2,000 of the hell things or gathering over 20,000 resources in total. That's the kind of side thing that you'd think is usually just for achievement or just to unlock something, but I could see them being kind of variations and stuff, or that could be a win condition, that you could either take on the raid boss or you could do something different like upgrade the settlement to level 5. It's a good thing I'm not a game designer. My name's Jade, I give you honest opinions about survival games mostly, as well as usually mostly just guides and tutorials. I only do reviews on games I really either hate or really, really like, and I do really like Tribes of Midgard, despite a little bit of criticism. Go and try it out, I think it's good value for money, I think you'll have a load of fun. You'll get easily 15 to 20 hours if you enjoy the types of games I've been speaking about before even any kind of repetition really sets in. And even after that, I think a lot of players are still gonna enjoy certain aspects, getting good and crafting that perfect run. Until next time, Ratbags, I'll see you later.